This video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question, remove duplicates from sorted array. And this question is commonly asked amongst all large tech companies. It's pretty easy. And the description is very long. It's not complicated, but I'm not going to go put you through the torture of listening to me read the description. So I'm just going to tell you what they want. As you probably guessed from the title, they want you to remove the duplicates from the array, but there are some things that they want. And this actually makes our life easier, but all they want you to do is just put the unique elements at the beginning and they don't even really care what the rest of the numbers are. So we have, let's see, four unique elements here. They just want you to put the four unique elements to the left of the array. They don't care what you have here. They don't even care if it, they don't care if it's null. They don't care if it's zeros. And then they want you to return how many unique elements they are. So in our case, the unique elements would be zero, one, two, three. We would return four. And once again, LeetCode doesn't even really care what the rest of the elements are in the array. And they also don't want you to shrink or do anything else with the array. And this is going to bring me to my next important point. LeetCode wants you to modify the array in place. And the word in place is just the way that it sounds. Whenever we are modifying an array in place, we can't do things like initialize a new array to put the unique elements in it. We can't use things like link because link actually returns new arrays when we use things like select. Whenever we are going to modify an array in place, what you're going to have to do is you're going to pass in the array that leak code is going to give to you. And then you are going to have to also return the array that leak code gives to you. Or another variation of this would be just returning void and in manipulating the array directly in memory and not returning anything at all. But just remember, in place is exactly the way it sounds. And it basically means that you cannot return a brand new array. You have to manipulate that exact same array in the exact same place in memory. We are going to solve this algorithm with a for loop and one pointer. We could use a two pointer technique, but I think two pointer is just going to end up more confusing. So just having one pointer is going to make our lives a lot easier. Also with this way of solving the algorithm, we are going to have a time complexity of n, and we're going to have a space complexity of one, which is going to be enough for any big tech thing interview. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this algorithm visually. What we are going to do in the very first part is we are going to initialize a for loop, obviously. And all this for loop is going to do is it's going to iterate through our array and check every two numbers that are side by side each other. And if you don't know how to do this, don't worry. I'm going to explain it here in a second. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to initialize a pointer at the second number, which is going to be index number one. And the whole entire point of this algorithm is to do something if the numbers are not the same. If the numbers are the same, we're going to do nothing. If you don't know what I mean by that, just watch. So first things first, are the numbers not the same? The numbers are the same, so we are going to do nothing and we are just going to continue iterating through our array. Are the numbers not the same? No, these two numbers are not the same, so we are going to take our number two here and we are going to move it to where our pointer is just like that. Then since we are done with this part in the actual index, we are done with this element in the array. We, are, we no longer need anything to do with it. We can go ahead and move our pointer. Then we are going to do the same exact thing. Are the numbers not the same? The numbers are the same, so we are going to do nothing. We're going to keep moving on. The logic is not going to execute. We're going to move to the next part in the array. These numbers are not the same, so we are going to take our right number right here and we are going to move it to where our pointer is just like that. Congratulations, we are done with this element in the array. We can go ahead and move on. 
Next thing, we're going to continue iterating. These numbers are the same. Our logic is not going to execute, so we are going to move on to the very end where our numbers are not the same. Then we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We are going to take our four and we are going to move it to the end of the, or we are going to move it to where our pointer is. And the for loop is going to break. Everything is done here. And that is pretty much how our algorithm is going to work. Pretty simple, huh? So let's go ahead. Let's go over into VS Code. Let's code it up. So first thing that I'm gonna do, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to declare a class called solution. You could put the code in the program.cs, but I'm gonna put it in a, in a new class called solution. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to type out the boilerplate code for the leak code question. I'll leave a link down below if you want to see it, but you can just copy if you want to. We're returning an int. And that's because they leak code wants the number of unique elements. Why they want the number of unique elements of uh, in our actual question, I have no idea. That's kind of I think that's kind of a dumb thing to return, but it's leak code, so I don't know. They make the rules. So next thing that we're going to do is we are going to check if the length is zero and. We have to do a lot of these checks because this will greatly increase your speed and I need to make also need to make sure that this is zero. And if you don't put this here, it absolutely kills your time complexity. And this is on most uh, questions where you're taking in an array. So if you're taking in an array and the actual number could be zero, make sure you put this here because it will kill your time complexity if you don't. Next thing is we need to declare our pointer. I'm going to call this unique index. You could call this whatever you want to, but we talked about this on the whiteboard. This pointer, what we just initialized is actually this, this yellow arrow that we talked about before. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to initialize it at number one. And this is what's going to keep track of our unique index. And this is also what we're going to return from our actual leak code uh, function. So. So next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and we're just gonna go ahead, rip a for loop. And we're going to initialize this for loop at one and we're going to actually iterate through the end just like we do any other for loop. Pretty uh, just regular for loop. The only thing is that we are going to initialize at one. Now, why are we going to actually initialize at one as opposed to zero? I thought we were going to start this uh, for loop at the beginning of the array, Teddy. I thought that's what you said. Well, that is that is true. But the thing is, is that we're going to start the actual for loop at one, but we're going to be checking the zero, or we're going to be checking at the element to the previous part. What exactly do I mean by that? And this is actually pretty important, so I would pay attention because this is a very, very common way that leak code uh, questions are structured. First, we are going to access the actual first element. So the I is going to come down here. Then we're going to access the element to the, we're going to check the element that is previous to the I. How exactly do we do that? Well, we actually access I minus one, and that's what's going to actually allow us to iterate and check these elements. So it's going to start at this one, but we're going to be actually checking the element right before, and that's what that negative one means and that's very common it, that is ubiquitous across leak code so make sure to keep in mind that part right there because this is a very common thing that you see in leak code then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead we're going to take our nums that we're going to take our array and we're going to access it at the unique element and then if we do find it we're going to take that right element and that's when we're going to actually move it over so this kind of this may look confusing to you right now but let me just go ahead and explain it so this is this part right here the part that we just made what's going to happen is when this actually triggers so when the numbers are not the same so i'll just go ahead i'll just control z and we'll go ahead and move back here so it's going to initialize right here and when the numbers are not the same it is going to execute so the numbers are not the same Let's just say right here, this is what's going to move it over and this is what's going to actually make it a three like we had before. So that's what's actually going to switch the elements. And then as you guessed it, when we do trigger the logic, just like we had before, 
this is when we are going to increment our unique index and that is pretty much it once we get done once we get done with our for loop once we get to the end of the actual array this is when we're going to return the unique index so let's go ahead in here and let's actually copy and paste this code into leak code and see what we get so go ahead go over here let's take the code and spruce it up a little bit we could move this over one more just to make things look a little bit better let's go ahead and run it see what are you see if our test cases run everything runs correctly let's go ahead and submit it and see how we stack up and we're on the slow end but it's passable our time complexity is let's see here n so our, our time complexity is passable we have a uh, linear time complexity and our space complexity is one nothing is over linear time complexity this is good enough for any a uh, big tech interview. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.